Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Heather Winther. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Senior Marketing Manager for UVM Dining. Joined with me tonight um, are some of my team members, Jennifer Weefers, our Marketing Manager, Nicole Riley, our Sustainability and Partnership Manager, and Anya Egan, our Registered Dietitian. Uh, we're excited to serve you up some delicious overview of our dining program tonight. Before we dive in, just a little housekeeping. This presentation is being recorded. You might see a little red dot um, and will be posted when it's done on the UVM orientation web page, as well as it'll be on the UVM dining social media channels if you need to reference back to it later. This presentation will be about 45 minutes of us sharing information, and then um, we will answer um, some of our group questions. Also, if you stay tuned all the way to the end, I'm going to have a little prize for some of you. So stay tuned. OK. All right, so UVM Dining, um, it is an experience. We are more than great food. Um, our program is centered on fresh ingredients, nourishing options, uh, a shared sense of environmental and social responsibility, which we'll get into more later. Health and safety are at the forefront of everything we do. Dining is probably the biggest, brightest, boldest spaces um, that you will encounter on campus. We're going to have some fun tonight uh, as I go through some details here. So uh, if you've got a water bottle or a glass, uh, go fill it, grab a snack and settle in. Okay. So uh, who are we? Um, UVM Dining. Um, we are chefs. We're managers. We're cashiers. We're leaders, planners, friends, colleagues, you name it. Um, what are we? Um, we are spaces, which we'll get into more detail of. We are programs. We are community. How do we offer um, ourselves, our team up? Uh, we, we do it every day um, by being available, by sharing the latest information, by staying on top of trends and the latest things. Okay, There's a whole team behind us too. So again, culinarians, operators, specialists, we also have interns, student employees, support staff that make up this team. And we are highly invested and passionate about um, student and family success as part of the Catamount family. So things for you to keep in mind. Our key takeaways for this evening is after the session, we want you to feel confident when you're exploring your dining options. We want you to that's my fingers, <laughs> understand the resources available to help you navigate dining locations and then um, feel ready to embark on new spaces and, and being part of new communities um, as you form connections through dining. OK, great. Please know again, our whole team is invested in your future success. Um, these key takeaways that we shared are meant to ensure you feel the maximum benefit of your meal plan and the full dining program. On that note, uh, we are going to jump into meal plan options. So there are many uh, meal plan options that are offered through UVM. First up is our all access plan. This plan ensures students have meals from our dining halls from the first day of the semester to the last. Keep in mind, all first time first year students will start on this plan. You can switch your meal plan within the first two weeks of semester if you find that doesn't meet your needs. Any student living on campus is required to have a meal plan for the term of their nine month contract. Our RA facilities are not equipped to provide individual meal prep. You'll see that um, dorms might vary um, where you're staying. And so um, we make sure that our dining locations can provide you with a variety of menu options throughout the year. Our All Access Plus plan also offers unlimited meal options, as you'll notice. Um, so unlimited meals, just show you this kind of breakdown of what you get. So the name of the plants are here in bold, All Access, All Access Plus, and then what you receive is underneath that. So the All Access Plus, it offers similar to the other plan, um, unlimited meal swipes, but it also gives them uh, 300 retail points. So twice as many retail points. It also um, offers guest meals, which we'll get into what those are. Um, two more, five guest meals, so two more than um, what you get with the all access plan. With our flex plan, it provides the best of both worlds uh, with a variety of balance of dining in our, you can dine in our dining halls or retail location. This plan covers approximately, um, you know, 60 retail points, uh, 10 meal swipes per week, depending how you average it. 
unlike the all-access plan, it's not intended to cover all meals um, offered during the semester. It would be the student's responsibility to budget how they use those swipes and retail points. Um, this is meant for the student who wants to kind of balance their time between dining halls and retail locations. And we'll get into what the difference is between those in a little bit. Note that this is the student's responsibility, like I said, to, to budget how they use it. We do offer balance cards. Um, if you go to our cashier area in our dining halls, they're like these little cards um, that kind of track where your spending should be at that time of the year to see that you're on track. And then our retail point plan. So this one does not include uh, meal swipes. So retail point plan is designated for the student who enjoys flexibility and convenience. The plan covers approximately um, as it shows in there, um, you know, 25 meals, 1450 retail points, and then the three guest meals. Um, it's not intended to cover all meals offered during the semester. And again, with this one, it's important um, for the student to understand that they have to budget how they use it. Something overall to consider with these meal plans is that um, any meal swipes um, not used by the end of the semester expire at the semester's end, and they're not refundable. Unused retail points will carry over from fall to spring semester, as long as the student is still you know, on the on-campus meal plan. Any retail points not used by the end of the spring semester does expire and they're non-refundable. Um, if your meal plan is, is canceled anytime, you no longer have access to the meals, unused retail points or guest meals. So keep that in mind. Um, if your student comes to campus and finds that the all access meal plan isn't working for them, again, they can, which is the one they start on, they can switch to one of our other meal plans within the first two weeks of the semester. More on how to do that later. So we mentioned a couple things on the previous slide and just want to kind of break down some UVM dining terminology with you. Um, also, so you know, uh, on our website, which we'll talk more about later, we have a terminology page uh, where we explain more about the different words and phrases you might hear um, when you're in our dining spaces. A meal swipe. So this is what you use to get entry into our dining hall. You'll swipe one meal at the cash area before approaching a meal station. So think about it as you're coming through the doorway, you see a friendly face, you will tap your phone down um, on the little device on the counter. And then once you're in, it's all you care to eat. Um, so soon on the all access plan has unlimited swipes or think of it as entries. That means you can dine in the lo um, dine in the location as little or as much as you want throughout the day throughout the week, throughout the semester, all for one price. That the all access meal plan is designed for students to eat most of their meals in our dining halls. We've, been, we've seen, just to give you an example, where someone might come in before a class and just wanna grab coffee and a muffin. And then after class, they wanna come back and you know have a full sandwich or a burger, just for an example of um, that kind of accessibility. With our all access and all access plus plan, um, those two meal plans guarantee a student meal for the first day of class to the last day. Again, unlimited meal swipes, as we said. Um, think of it as like a season pass to the dining halls. Um, again, you can you can use all of the dining halls, which again, we'll get into what each of them are. There are four. Um, generally, students will use one or two depending on where they live um, or where their classes are and activities are located. Um, a guest meal is like a meal swipe. Um, so same process where they, the student would tap their phone down on the device, but it's when um, they have a friend, a family member who wants to enter that all you care to eat dining hall with them, they would use it there. If you use up the guest meals that are part of your meal plan, you can then uh, still purchase a meal for a friend or family member visiting using retail points. Um, also many of our registers accept other forms of payment. And um, just a reminder um, that the number of guest meals, as you saw on the previous screen, will vary by the meal plan option you have. A retail point. A retail point is a declining balance account, and each point is valued at a dollar. They're accepted at all of our locations across campus. So how it works. You walk into a retail location, maybe you pull an item off of a shelf, maybe you walk up to the cashier and place an order. So when you go to pay, if the total comes to $7.50, seven and a half points will be deducted from your meal plan. Points are popular um, and you can use them for things like smoothies from the EVM Dairy Bar, maybe a latte from Campus Perk, a sandwich from Green Roof Deli, um, so many options. And if you have any points left over at the end of the fall semester, remember they will roll over to the spring, but in the spring semester, 
they will expire. And these are the ones that come with your meal plan. If you run out of points, which does happen sometimes, and again, there are those balance card sheets. If you run out of points, you can purchase more anytime through our website. The balance of those new additional points that were not part of your meal plan will carry over from semester to semester as long as you're enrolled at UVM. And if you got employed at UVM afterwards, they stay um, with your account long after. All right. So I mentioned before we have different dining experiences. We have dining halls and we have retail locations. There are four dining halls on campus. There are 15 and counting retail locations. And there are additional UVM retail locations that are managed by UVM versus UVM dining. Of our four dining halls, let me go into some detail. So they are Central, Harris Millis, Northside, and Redstone. To enjoy these all you care to eat locations, um, the following payment methods are accepted. A meal swipe, where you tap in, you can pay the door price, and to use the door price, you could use retail points, you could use cat scratch dollars, which are UVM, you could also use a credit debit account. At our 15 retail locations, um, which are most staffed by UVM dining employees, student employees, um, some are also run by independent local businesses. These locations are where you'll use those retail points. You can also use cat scratch, credit and debit. And just, you know, additional uh, UVM retail locations on campus um, that are not managed by UVM Dining are Henderson's Cafe, Cat Paws. Those are located in the Davis Center. We'll go into more detail about our locations um, in the following slides. One thing also to keep in mind is that you'll see some photos of each of these locations, but keep in mind each dining hall varies in size. They vary in layout and hours. They offer a variety of seating. Some might have similar stations, um, but they all serve a varied daily, a varied daily menu, um, including vegan, vegetarian, and allergen safe options. So we mentioned the difference between meal swipes and retail points. There's a time when the two um, feel like they're interchanged, and that is our meal exchange program. So now that you know the difference between a dining hall and a retail location, a swipe and a retail point, you're ready to learn more about this meal exchange program. So this is available only to on-campus students, and this is where you can use two meal swipes per week, Monday through Friday, in a retail location. So typically you would just use points as we share, but in this case, you're actually using a swipe in a retail location. Once you get into that retail location, that meal swipe is good for one entree, one side, and one beverage. So three items total. Refer to signage inside each location um, to learn what that entree and what those sides might be. And again, those can be used twice a week, Monday through Friday. Do note that those reset every Monday and they do not roll over week to week. So how and when you choose to use them is up to you. Um, just, you know, the locations where you can use them. And again, once you arrive on campus, we will have signage. As you can see, this meal exchange logo is what you will see when you're actually in our locations. Um, but they are Green Roof Deli, which is in the Davis Center, the Marketplace, which is also in the Davis Center, um, not including the Broccoli Bar, which is a local business that has a station inside the Marketplace. And then University Marche, uh, which is a location, we'll get into more detail, but has multiple stations. The one station it does not include is Wild Blue, which again is a, a local provider of ours that um, does poke bowls and sushi. So you've learned a thing or two about our different meal plans and meal plan options. Maybe what you found out is that the meal plan you started on isn't the one you wanna be on. Can you switch it? Yes, you can switch your meal plan within the first two weeks of any semester. So whether it's this fall or this spring, for next year. What we recommend is you visit our dining plan options page. So what that's going to do, like the slide you saw earlier, is show you what you would get with each plan, show you the cost of each. And once you know, okay, I want to move from here to here, then you can submit a meal plan switch form. Where you'll find that is on our website. There's a quick link section and it will say meal plan switch form. Please note, it can take up to 10 business days for us to process those switches. Um, they're completed in the order that they're received. If you have any questions outside of the form, you can reach out to our staff. Once that form is submitted, 
please begin and and um, you've heard from us that the switch has gone through. Please begin to use your plan as if it you know were your new one. You can only switch your mail plan um, via the form once. So you can switch it. You can only do it once per semester. Um, please make sure again that you when you're doing the form that you make note of what you currently have and which one you want to move to. We've seen situations where someone already was on a plan and filled out the form selecting the same plan name. So make sure you know which one you're switching to and from before completing the form. OK, and just, you know, unless you indicate a change to us, whatever meal you're on at the end of the fall semester will carry over to the spring semester. But again, you have those first two weeks to decide if you want to make a change. So we've talked about on campus meal plans. We recognize that there are some of you who may be planning on living off campus. Maybe you're a transfer student. Maybe you live locally. We want to make sure that you know that there is other options for you as well. So with off campus meal plans, you can kind of build a meal plan consisting of both block meals and retail points. We use the term block meals here um, so that you understand that while it functions just like a meal swipe, we give it a different name so that we can best understand um, the type of meal plan you're using. Because as we said before, meal exchange, is when a swipe is used in a retail location, is only eligible for an on-campus student. So a block meal cannot be used like a meal swipe for meal exchange. Other than that, um, the retail points um, here are very much like we mentioned earlier, um, where they um, are a declining balance. Really nice thing is we have a variety of options. You want to start out with uh, 50 and then add as you go. Great. You want to start out with, a, you know, 100, 200. That's OK as well. You can also do a mix. You could do some block meals, some retail points, um, kind of build it as you see fit. These will become available starting August 8th. Um, so right now you will not see them on our website if you were to um, want to sign up for one. And keep in mind, these are not intended um, to cover 100% of the meals. All right, so um, we talked about um, obviously our different dining halls and locations just a moment ago. I wanna kind of share with you a map of campus. OK, so we've got some street names here, some building names. Each of these little um, spoon and fork icons are different locations. And as you'll see, we've got quite a concentration of them here in the central part of campus. That's a lot of them we have are in the data center. And we'll go into more detail about what is there. As a reminder, we have four dining halls and 15 retail locations. So you have something all over campus, something different you can enjoy every day. So of these locations, as we mentioned before, they're on different parts of campus. So if you know already where you're living on campus, keep these in mind. They're just to kind of let you sit with that for a sec. These are different, the in blue are the different types of campus or the, the headers are different parts of campus and then the type of dining halls and retail locations in each. Where you see it bolded, like Central Campus, Harris, Red Sun, Northside, those are dining halls. Everything else, is a retail location. Where you see this asterisk next to some locations, you, when you go to that space, you will actually see multiple stations. So like a, um, and that's in a retail location. So in a dining hall, you walk in, there's tons of different stations for you to pick things. In some of our retail locations, we have a similar um, environment where when you go in, you have different um, options to pick from for hot options. Okay, so dining halls. Can I tell you more about them? So Central Campus, uh, it is our largest, our newest, our biggest. Um, I think I actually heard a rumor that it is the busiest restaurant in the state of Vermont, serves the most amount of people. Um, and what's great about this location, it's like right in the heart of campus. Uh, it has rustic open style stations, um, menus that include pretty much every item you can imagine. And a reminder, this is an all you care to eat dining hall. So once you swipe in, it's all you care to eat. We'll have plant-based options, vegan options, allergen-friendly options. Just to share some special features, there's a station called Rustic Roots. It's a plant-forward station. There's a simple servings, which um, we'll get into a little bit later. We have a simple zone. We have sizzle, which is kind of like a grilled food, like burgers, chicken sandwich, stuff like that. 
Harris Millis, an athletic campus. Um, there's something for everyone at this location as well. Um, we have a variety of fresh foods, again, plant-based, vegan, uh, vegetarian, allergen-friendly menu offerings. Some stations that are unique to this location are Peapod, which is plant forward, like the one we mentioned before. Um, we also have a simple servings and a simple zone, which I'll get into more detail about in a little bit. At all of these locations, Central and Harris, um, we accept a meal swipe, or we can use retail points, cat scratch, credit debit, um, and by paying the door price. We have a different price for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, which is good to keep in mind if you have a guest or somebody visiting. Our other two uh, dining halls are Redstone and Northside. Redstone, like Central, um, and Harris Mills has a variety of options. It's really easy um, to kind of navigate. It is split between the left side and the right side of the room, kind of like Harris and Millis. So you'll come to find what space you want to sit in and enjoy the most. This is also, it can be said, an all-you-care-to-eat location. This has a rustic route, um, and it has a simple zone. As well as, as well as other stations. Our north side location has a little bit of both. It has an all you care to eat area, like our other dining halls. It also has a small retail area where you can purchase some items for on the go. Now we'll talk about our retail locations. We're going to start at the ground floor and work our way up. So on the first floor, some of our newest partners, these actually just opened last year, are the Halal Shack and Jamal's Chicken. They're both inside what is called Brennan's on the first floor of the Davis Center. The types of foods you might find here are, you know, full meals, what you might consider a side like fries, hot and cold beverages like ices. It's like a slushy. Um, a great thing to know is that these are halal um, offered menus. Um, so Halal Shack, um, when you order it, you'll have something like a grain bowl um, or you could have lettuce on it and then you kind of add to it um, with different toppings. Jamal's chicken is a little bit more of a straightforward menu where you pick out one chicken tender, three, five, and let me tell you, they're huge. One could be enough. They're very delicious. Then we have the marketplace. This is one of those locations where we said earlier there's multiple stations. So once you get inside, you will see that we have Vermont Burger Company, uh, soup options, a salad bar, we can build your own salad, a um, and then broccoli bar, which is a local business that offers a delicious um, vegan bowl of broccoli and rice and dumplings. Also keep in mind that at the Vermont Burger Company station, we do oftentimes weekly burger and salad specials. So something new to try all the time. On that same floor, but just outside of the marketplace on the other end of the hallway is UVM Dairy Bar. Inside this space, um, there's also a waffle cabin. So UVM Dairy Bar is your go-to for ice cream, for smoothies. We've got fruit smoothies, smoothies with kale in it, um, with almond milk. We've got sweet ones. We've got savory ones, if you think about spinach. Um, and we have Waffle Cabin. If you've ever uh, been on a, a mountain in the wintertime, you probably have tried a Waffle Cabin in the Northeast. These are delicious, always fresh um, Belgian sugar waffles. And we cook them to order. They're really good on their own, but um, you could also put a scoop of ice cream on them. A little extra sweet treat. Also in the Davis Center on the second floor is Green Roof Deli and New World Tortilla. Green Roof Deli is a build your own um, sandwich option. So you could start with like a wrap, a roll, um, and then you kind of add your toppings on from there. We also have some great sides that you can pick from. New World Tortilla is another local business. They've actually been on the UVM campus for over 17 years, started by two brothers, um, one of which, both of which um, are alumni, and they um, serve very large and delicious uh, burritos, tacos, and a lot of their ingredients that they use are local, like you'll see in our dining halls. Additionally, on parts of campus, and these are across campus, again, you can refer back to that map that we showed earlier, we have University Marche, Inside this location, which is University Marche is within the Living Learning building, we have Neapolitan pizza, we have toast, uh, which is like breakfast sandwiches, we have picante, which is a build your own burrito, we have bakery items, we have our partner, 
wild blue, which makes really awesome sushi, variety of flavors, and poke balls. There's also um, grocery items. So you could go in there and you could grab some fresh produce. You could grab a box of mac and cheese to make later. Another local business is in this building, not within University Marche, but on that same hallway called Skinny Pancake. They make crepes, um, they have sweet and savory, but they also offer some great coffee drinks and bakery items. And this is just one of their many locations in the state of Vermont. Then we have Redstone Market. You might've heard me say before that we have Redstone Dining. So just, you know, these are attached. They're actually um, in the same building. They have separate entrances, um, but we often have staff that might move between the two. And what's really nice about Redstone Market is giving you that convenience factor of in one building, you have both a dining hall or a retail location. Uh, in Redstone Market, you'll have access to like hot grill options, reheatable meals, grocery items, things like that. Another location that um, I don't have a photo of right now, um, but want to tell you about is 12. So it's a self-service kiosk. It's only, um, it, it's located in the Gene Mance building and only available to Gene Mance students. So if you know you're gonna live in that building, it's something available to you. So as you explore, as all these locations that we've just told you about, dining halls, retail locations, there's several important things to consider. Okay, so in a lot of these dining halls, we have allergen stations. We understand that our students have a variety of needs. There will be in some locations, simple servings. This offers plated meals, and these are all going to be free of gluten and the top eight allergens. Those are wheat, eggs, milk, soy, and tree nuts, peanuts, shellfish, and sesame. Simple servings is available at Central Campus Dining and Harris Millis Dining. So dining halls. The food is prepared in a separate area by allergy trained staff and each dish is plated to reduce the risk of cross contact. This station is open to all students for lunch or dinner and it's popular. It's where I have a lot of my lunches. Then we have Simply Three. This offers plated meals as well, free of gluten, nuts, and milk. When we say nuts, peanuts and tree nuts. Simply Three is available at Redstone Dining. The food is prepared in a separate area, similar to what we said about simple servings by trained chefs. Um, the station is open also to all students for lunch and dinner. Then we have Simple Zone. Simple Zone is a self-service pantry. So we say pantry, it's behind a door um, or it's got, in some cases, a space where you step into. That's what we call it a zone. Inside this space, um, it is free of gluten, peanuts, tree nuts. It's in all of our dining halls. Uh, oh, sorry, just noticed that. Uh, we'll mix up. Um, it is located in dining halls like Harris Millis, Redstone. Um, oh, sorry, just got a little slip up in my note there. Apologies. It is located in all of our dining halls. When we think about um, access to Harris Millis and Redstone Dining, there are doors on those. And one thing that we're doing that's relatively new is we are locking the doors to simple zones and requiring cat card access. The reason for this is that we want to make sure that just the students who need these allergen friendly zones have access to them. Uh, once you're on campus, students can access a form. It'll be a QR code um, on the door. You can also find it on our website and you can um, submit the form to ask for access to simple zone. And then your phone, like we said before, that you would tap when you go in dining location will give you access to that space. Once you get in those spaces, there's microwaves, a toaster oven, um, refrigerators and freezers. We ask that students wash their hands and wear gloves when using this space. We work really hard to educate the community about the purpose of like keeping it safe for those that truly need it. There's also um, some made to order hot food menus you can look at. There's gluten-free favorites like gluten-free pasta, pizza, chicken tenders and more. And again, to access the locked simple zones, which are just at Red Zone and Harris right now, you will need to complete the access form and our registered dietitian, um, Anya, that I mentioned earlier, will uh, connect with you about access to those. Just so you know, when you are first coming to campus, we wanna make sure that there's a bit of a learning curve for that. So we will keep those two simple zones unlocked the first two weeks of each semester. So when you first arrive, don't have to worry about it. Um, but remember to fill out that form if you know you're going to need access. Um, we mentioned a lot of different dining options in our location. So if you have specific dietary preferences, just know that all of our locations 
dining hall or retail, offer a nice mix of vegan vegetarian options. These symbols, vegetarian, vegan, plant-based, um, you will see on our menus, printed menus in our spaces, online menus as well. Um, and we just give a little key here for what each of these symbols mean, if you're not familiar or if you're curious about learning about new dietary options. If you have certain, um, we understand that some students come to campus looking for dining options that align with their religious beliefs. So we have a dedicated kosher kitchen on campus. Um, it offers hot kosher meals Sunday through Thursday for dinner at Redstone Dining. As I mentioned before about um, some of our retail locations, Halal Shack and Jamal's Chicken um, offer halal foods. We also have additional dining options available during religious holidays throughout the year. And we really try to work in collaboration with student clubs and departments to communicate these out prior to holidays. We know that some students will be coming to campus with food allergies, intolerances, other special dietary needs, and they might be seeking nutritional support. If this is true for you or a friend, we encourage you to connect with Anya, who is one of our moderators on the call today. And here's a photo of her. You see her on campus. Um, you can have a one-on-one -on -one session with her and she will help you navigate our different dining locations safely. Um, maybe you need an accommodation, you would connect with her. Um, her contact information is on this slide. It's also on our website. Food is fun. Um, this is a scene from Central Campus Dining Hall. Um, it brings people together and we have a responsibility to ourselves, our friends, our campus and our planet to think sustainability, to think sustainable. We have a few ways of doing this on campus we'd like to share with you. So UVM dining and sustainability. Um, something to keep in mind is the University of Vermont recently adopted a new brand statement for people and planet. This phrase reinforces the distinctive excellence of our university's academic and research activities and really centered on human health, thriving communities and the environment. What does sustainability mean for UVM dining? Well, we're a leader in this space. Sustainability is a long-standing core value throughout the UVM dining team. It's woven into everything we do from purchasing local and sustainable foods, providing a variety of plant forward options, reducing food packaging and waste to giving back to our community. Our chefs work really hard to source local ingredients and offer recipes that are both good for your health and socially and environmentally responsible. Programs you'll see on campus include, but are not limited to, Vermont First, EcoWare, and Waste Sorting. Let me tell you a little bit more about each of those. Vermont first, okay? Um, we know that many of our students care about where their food comes comes from. Vermont first, BICEX was started in 2014, and it is our commitment to purchasing local and regional foods. We feature farmers and producers throughout the year on signage, social media, and at special events. This program started here at UVM, and now it's grown to 14 locations across the state. Last year alone, we purchased from 76 local producers grown or manufactured in Vermont, including UVM's own Catamount Educational Farm, which provides produce and apples in the fall, and Proctor Maple Research Center, which provides 100% of the maple syrup you will find served on campus. Our Harvest of the Month program is where we encourage you to eat with the season. Um, you will notice that in our dining locations each month, uh, we highlight a different local crop and um, we enjoy, we, yeah, we invite you to try these out. We'll be rolling out a new Harvest of the Month calendar, which starts in August. So look for this Vermont First logo. If you see it on producer flyers in our dining halls, it's our way of telling you that something that's being served at that station is local. And we want you to learn more about that farmer producer. If you see the Vermont First logo in a retail location, that might be noting that the item that's on that shelf is a local or regionally produced item. EcoAir. The next sustainability program we want to cover is EcoAir. It is our reusable container program. EcoAir is the only way you can take a meal out of the dining hall. Due to health and safety reasons, you cannot bring in your own Tupperware to a dining location. This program will run similar to checking a book out of the library. We have five steps on how it works in the dining halls. Request an EcoAir container from the cashier, which again, you'll see right away when you enter. 
Then something new is you're going to have uh, scan your reuse pass, which will be in the mobile wallet on your phone. Then walk around, fill it with food. Um, as you can see from the photo of these students, uh, quite a variety of options. Then you're going to leave the dining hall and enjoy your meal in your classroom, uh, maybe at work, on the go, in your dorm room. When you're done, you're going to rinse it, return that used container, and we'll have an ecoware bin, and then the cycle begins again. Uh, please note that um, if any container is not returned at the end of each semester, there is a $5 fee. Say you want to dine in and take a meal to go. All right, no problem. You just swipe in twice. So again, if you're on that All Access or All Access Plus, you have unlimited swipes. So um, you swipe once and you can dine with your friends, and then you can swipe again to take Ecoware out. And maybe you need it for after a class or a lab or work. Um, Ecoware is also available at four of our retail locations to help reduce packaging. If you use it, you'll actually get a 25 cent discount when you choose to reuse. It's a nice little bonus. Waste sorting. We are committed to decreasing packaging and food waste on campus as much as possible. We use um, the EPA guide on waste reduction to enforce our initiatives on campus. We understand that recycling and compost rules are different depending on where you might be coming from, different states. When you're here on campus, though, um, we ask you to scrape your plates and sort your waste. So here's a quick guide on what goes where. Um, as you can see, compost, recycle, landfill. Please take note of the signage and waste bubbles in the waste sorting areas. They are there to help. All food scraps and napkins will go in the compost. Just so you know, the local compost facility no longer accepts compostable packaging in the compost stream. This is due to operational challenges. Um, so now they go in the landfill. Again, maybe rules are different where you're currently from. Place all recyclables in the recycling bin. If you're not sure, check to see if it has a recycling symbol on it and ensure it's empty and rinsed or wiped clean. Anything that isn't compost or recyclable goes into the landfill, like compostable packaging, like this black plastic fork you see here, disposable coffee cups, things like that. So um, thank you in advance for doing your part um, to scrape your plates and keep our dining spaces clean. So you've done some exploring of different aspects of UVM dining. Now, how can you navigate all of that? Well, there's lots of resources and we want to encourage you to be a navigator. We will provide you with the tools to help you chart your course. For starters, the UVM dining website. Maybe you've already visited it. Hopefully you have. This is what our homepage looks like. Um, this is where you'll come to read about, as you mentioned before, dining plans, how to uh, purchase more retail points. You can meet our team, view hours of operation, um, find the contact information for our registered dietitian. You'll also find an events page where we share a monthly calendar with events like free bubble tea, build your own Sunday bar, um, also the occasional uh, free treat on a national food holiday, just to name a few. Another one, if you're not currently doing it, you've got your phone in your hand, follow UVM Dining on Instagram. That is our handle. Um, here you'll see highlights on local dishes, some important like Dining 101 info. You'll get to meet some of our team members. Also, every Wednesday, we do a weekly Win It Wednesday giveaway. So you're gonna wanna enter those, they're pretty awesome. Um, we do recommend you follow us now before you arrive on campus. It helps you get a sense of like the community that you'll be a part of. Then we have our everyday app. This will also be your friend. Um, again, you can download this before you come onto campus. What's really important is that when you download it and start an account, that you only use your UVM email, not any other personal email, like a Gmail or anything. It must be your UVM email when you set up your account. And this is so that you can connect your meal plan to the app. Why this is important is because in addition to being able to view hours and addresses and menus for our locations, for select retail locations, you can order ahead. Lines can be really common the first few weeks of the semester while students are getting settled in classes, labs, you know, activities. So it's really nice to have that option to order ahead and go and pick it up. All of our dining halls, because there's not someone there who can pick the items for you, are going to be view only in the app. Just a little uh, insider tip too. Um, I'm somewhat newer to campus and I will sometimes use Google Maps um, or a different map app to 
find the best walking options around campus. Some other tools or information are the dish. So this is a weekly newsletter where we serve you bites of great information. It usually comes out on Monday. As a new student, you will be automatically enrolled in this at your UVM email. So keep an eye out for them. We also have the dining advisory group, which is a group that meets three times a semester. And it's an opportunity for staff, students and faculty to um, get involved uh, with the dining program and impact changes in their dining experience. Another way uh, to navigate being involved dining is employment. Maybe you're thinking about having a job while you're at campus. Maybe not your first semester, maybe your second semester, um, or maybe you know someone who's looking for something. We hire many students. Um, you will see them across campus. Here's one of them. Um, this is like one of the best kept secrets on campus. We offer part-time work. It's not work study. It's with administer classes. Great opportunity to enhance your resume, hone professional skills, um, and we order, offer competitive pay. You can add even additional pay if you work weekends and evenings. Our staff is really understanding of your schedules, and so we're flexible. If you're interested, we have a job inquiry form on our website. It's also linked on our Instagram. And when you complete it, um, it will let us know what type of options you're looking for. Do know that it's an inquiry form, not an application. So once you submit it, a member of our team will reach out to you. So now that you've explored um, options, you know how to navigate ways to um, get involved with UVM Dining. Now I'll tell you about different ways that you can um, connect with our team. So you can see different team members here. Um, we've got Nicole and Anya in the top left, our moderators, myself in the middle. Um, on the far right is Justin, our director of dining. We got Grace and many other team members with friendly faces that you will see. So we hope you'll come and talk to us. Talk to us in a dining hall. Talk to us at a resource fair. Wherever you see that UVM dining logo on our name tag, a chef coat or blue supervisor shirt, it's one of our team members. You could also email us at dining at uvm.edu. We have a comment form on our website you can submit. If you'd prefer, you can also text us. Um, so what you would do is you would text UVM Dining to 82257 and you can reach us that way. Information about how to do that, again, will be on our website and social media. Also new this year, and maybe I've already connected with some of you, is the Zimi app, something that orientation um, is using, and it's an opportunity for you to connect with different departments before you arrive. We have a dedicated Ask Dining channel. I've already received some great questions in there so far, so that's another way you can connect with us. All right. Throughout the year, we have hosted over 150 events and promotions. These include full takeovers of a dining hall, um, pop-ups, station takeovers, some of them are where they're in our units outside, and we really look forward to meeting you at one of these events during the week of welcome and beyond. Okay, we know that we covered a lot in this session. I said 45 minutes and it's 7.44, we're doing great. Okay, uh, we hope you feel confident on how to explore our dining options. We hope that you understand the resources available to help you navigate those dining locations and you're eager to engage with us across campus as you form new connections. Okay, now I'm going to uh, check in on the chat from my coworkers. Um, if you think of anything later um, that you didn't put in, again, you can email us at dining at uh, uvm.edu. You can submit something to our contact form, message us in the Zimi app or on our other media channels. So I will take a quick pause and see what we've got. Heather, could you give the hours for the dining halls? The out uh, for each one individually? Uh, just overall when they yeah, open. Um, so our dining halls, uh, I don't have a slide that I can just pull up and show you, but our dining halls um, have two hours. Um, two, sorry, two chunks of hours during the day. So they open in the morning where you can go and have breakfast for more of a brunch to lunch. Then they close for an hour and then reopen um, for dinner service. The hours do vary by location, um, but all will have that one hour block closed in the middle so that we can get food prepped and ready, clean off spaces. So it's important to know what those hours are um, as you're navigating your class 
and uh, maybe work schedules. And as I think I mentioned before, on our website, on our Instagram, we have hours of operations. You can see um, when those are, also in the everyday app that we mentioned, um, you can see all of our hours there. Does that help answer the question? Yes, thank you. All right. And could you talk just a little bit more about EcoWare and the new app that we'll be launching this fall? I can. Um, so EcoWare is something that we've had before on our campus. As you saw, I think those green containers, we've got kind of like a clamshell one that you can fit, um, you know, bulk items in. Then we also have a round one that you could put, you know, soups, liquids, yogurts in. Um, so those containers we will continue to use, but to keep track of how many are out there and them coming back, we are partnering with a new company called Reuse Pass, where we can track that. It's a great opportunity for us to know how many of those containers are out, how many are coming back, so we can see how much packaging we've saved on campus um, by, by not using single-use items. Nicole, is there anything you might want to add to that? Um, I'll just say that this is a new app, so we are working to just finalize the details. So once that is uh, finalized, we'll be sending that out via email and on, on our social media about how to download the app. Um, and that will be integrated into single sign-on. So you'll sign in with your net ID, just like you do with email. And essentially it's a, it's a QR code system. So our cashiers will be um, scanning out those QR code containers to your individual account. Um, so that's that's where it is similar to a library card um, in that, you know, you have this free access um, and it will really increase access to the program. So we're really excited about it um, and we hope you are too. Is there another question, Jen? Yeah, so do the dining halls accept cash? Dining halls um, accept a variety of things but they do not accept cash. So we have cat scratch, which is UVM money, retail points, and credit and debit. Our retail locations um, differ by location, but they accept all of those, plus some do accept cash. Um, we have more information about that on our website. We have a question about Redstone Dining. Is it closed for lunch this year and only serving breakfast and dinner? Great question. Um, so somebody who's done their research, maybe knows someone who already goes to UVM. Uh, so Redstone is reopening for lunch. So like I mentioned before, all four dining halls have two service hours per day. Um, so they open at breakfast, stay open through lunch, will close for an hour midday, and then reopen for dinner service. And that includes Redstone Dining this year. Because of that, if you do know somebody who lived on Redstone campus before, um, students that were specific to Redstone, had an extra level to the meal exchange program that won't exist now because Red Zone Dining will be open for lunch where it was not open last year. Heather, you mentioned Cat Scratch. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, I can tell you a little bit more about it. Cat Scratch is not a UVM dining program or product. It is something that UVM manages. They have a cat card office, which is the student ID um, that you'll have on your phone and adding dollars to that is something that you would reach out to their team about doing. You can use that. It's a type of payment type um, on campus and I believe some off campus locations. But again, that is a UVM program, not a UVM dining one. OK, um, well, one thing that, that you might not have thought to ask, but I'll let you know is where you're going to eat when you arrive for orientation. Um, here's kind of a, a schedule. Um, of those dates. So from August 21st through your first day of classes on the 26th, um, there will be open houses in our four dining halls. And these are a really great opportunity for students, but as well like family that you might be um, ha having helped you move in. You can dine together um, in our dining halls. There'll be more information about that. Um, then once you're actually here and part of the orientation program, your breakfast and dinners will be in a dining hall. They'll be at an assigned time. You'll learn more from the orientation department, but you'll be grouped into like colors. Um, there'll also be like a build your own box lunch option. Um, so you can kind of take your food on the go. There'll be so much um, happening during orientation. Um, and then that Sunday right before um, classes start, um, you can start using your meal plan. You can go to breakfast, you can go to lunch. Um, something to keep in mind too is you have convocation on that Sunday night. So you probably wanna prioritize eating something beforehand um, because you will be uh, on campus for that for a while. It'll be 
lots of energy, lots of fun. Um, it's a good idea to grab a meal before that. And then Monday, that's your first day of class. So um, think about how you're planning your day. Um, if you know that you wanna make sure that you grab just a banana or have a full sit down meal before you get to that first class, um, be sure to check our hours, check our menu online to see if what you want is being offered that day. Um, the stuffed French toast is probably some of my favorite items. And um, yeah, I'm just going to do a quick pause in case any other questions come in through the chat. Um, there is another question about the average cost uh, for meals in retail dollars in those retail <laughs> locations, if you can speak to that. Sure. They definitely vary. Um, for instance, like broccoli bar, they have one item that you order, but it consists of multiple things, but it's one price. Whereas you might go into University Marche and you want sushi, which has a price. You wanna grab a bottle of Gatorade, that has a price. Then you wanna grab an apple, that has a price to it. So when you go up to the cashier, they scan the two items that have barcodes, they enter the apple, and whatever your total is for those three items, the example I gave before was, say it was $7.50, and seven and a half retail points will now have been deducted from your account. Um, I guess to share with you just some common questions. These are some that we've heard before in the past um, from students and parents are like, how do you get the most out of your meal plan? Um, I know we've shared some of these already that like using EcoWare helps you um, kind of take food into a class if you if you are crunched on time. Um, grab and go items could be really great if you want just like a granola bar or some fruit. Um, again, you can order ahead with our everyday apps if you're kind of tight on time. Um, and you can kind of balance that, right? Do you want to use swipes? Do you, have, do you have time to like swipe in and like sit and eat in a dining hall? Um, or do you really want to use those retail points? Just kind of get in and out, um, but you could stock up on some snacks. Um, and if you're, you're short on time, like we mentioned, um, you could use the everyday app. Lines can be really crazy um, and common on the first few weeks. So it's important to like, again, understand your schedule of like where your classes are, where your dorm is, which dining location makes the most sense for you to go to. Keep in mind, like in general, the dining halls are gonna be the most busiest between six and 7.30. So if you have a class around that time and you can eat before or after, um, you should have plenty of options. And say you're like missing your favorite food, you don't, you haven't seen it within the first few weeks and you're trying to find it, just like, let us know. Um, talk to uh, a sous chef, um, a manager there. Again, I had shared before ways you can connect with us. So email, text, social media. Um, it's very likely that the, uh, the meal option you're looking for is something that we already have planned to offer um, at that location or another location on campus. And so we can point you to where that's being offered. Um, or maybe it's something we don't yet have planned, but maybe it's something we want to um, then offer. So please, if you don't see what you're what you're looking for, let us know. Um, also, if like you go to a station and there's food already plated and you look at, you got like a protein, you've got some greens, you've got grains, but you're like, mm, I really want two portions of protein and no grains. It's pre-plated to be easy for you. So you can just like grab it and go and, and it's got a balance of things. But if you just want two protein and one grain, just tell the staff member and we're happy to plate it how you want it. All right. Well, if there are no further questions, um, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We really look forward to meeting you and um, yeah, ready to ready to meet you soon. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your summer and we look forward to seeing you on campus in a few weeks.